Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got some special guests joining us this morning. We got Diallo Riddle. He's back. <laughs> and we got Blake Luxury Robin. How's Welcome. it going? Nice to be here. Now, Diallo, you're not supposed to be doing no interviews. Oh, I'm not talking about certain things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's certain words that will not come out of my mouth. Okay. I am here to talk about a podcast that I started with this man. Because, you know, we were, we were pandemic friends. You yes. know, like we would always talk about music. And at some point, uh, the good people at Heartbeat and Kevin Hart were like, hey, we want to like partner you up and do this like music podcast. And uh, they wanted to talk about some people. But I was like... I wasn't feeling the people they were talking about. I was like, I want to talk to this dude because he talks about the music itself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like he talks about the stems, the bass line, the drums, the 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 isolated vocals. And, you know, I would call this dude with like one question. And that five minute conversation would become like a 55 minute conversation. Okay. And I was just yeah. like, dude, we got to do this. How'd y'all connect with each other to do the, the, the weekly series one song? Well, I started this uh, TikTok in the pandemic mm -hmm. where I was breaking down songs like he described. See, I collect these things called multi-track stems. It's like the bass, the drums, the vocals from a bunch of songs. Mm -hmm. And I just made these little 60 second TikToks and they kind of blew up. I did one about Britney Spears, The Origin of Toxic. There's a sample from this Bollywood movie. It got 2 million views and suddenly I'm like a big, I mean, I have a decent TikTok <laughs> following. Uh, enough so that he found these videos and started just DMing me and saying, these are really cool. We ended up working together on one of his things that we can't talk about, um, <laughs> little, little music for one of those. And uh, yeah, then this conversation came about and he put, put it all together and was like, maybe this is something we do together and we break down the songs in a completely new way. We're gonna play the acapellas and the drums and talk about what's really going on under the layers of, yeah. the, of the song. So wait, 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 so where do you collect these multi-tracks from? Because you know, <laughs> people just don't sell multi-tracks on the side of the street. Producers are not just like, take I my, told you this was gonna come up. my snare, gonna come my up. hat, I told you and my bass line up. and my piano riffs. Like, so where are you there, getting these? There, there's a dark side of the internet, my friend. Okay. And <laughs> this is the benign side of the dark side. Okay. You know, we're okay. just trading musical. Actually, the honest answer is that a lot of times when people do remixes, that's what you do. You you get, I'm a, I'm a producer as well. And so songwriter mm -hmm. so i'll get when i do a remix for a band they'll send me all of this stuff and i think collectively a lot of people have been doing this for a lot of songs over the years a little underground network and we all kind of trade that's gotcha. how it's going on why the name one song so one song is literally what we're doing we're just going to break down one song per show so it so might be far, a song you've heard a million times you know sometimes it's a song we like sometimes it's a song we're like damn you know, this song has been played too much. Yeah, no, we've been doing it for now. We have uh, eight or seven, eight or nine episodes we've done. We did uh, Stevie Wonder Superstition. We did Amy Winehouse Rehab. We did Mo Money, Mo Problems, Notorious B.I.G. Uh, we're going to be doing Missy Elliott later today. Mm -hmm. um, work it. So, you know, it's big spectrum of pop music catalog, hip hop, rock for the last 60 years. So y'all yeah. break down lyrics too, because I would really, I still don't know what the hell Missy was saying in Work It. Like, we're gonna really? figure that out later today. Yeah, yeah. the ground. <laughs> that? Oh, that's that's put my thing down, flip it, and yeah. reverse it backwards. That's, that's all, she, all that that's is. She's just saying that for years. That's <laughs> all she's saying. Yeah. No, I you? did not. Know Once that. you find that out, it's like you know. Oh, I, I did yeah. a couple of bar mitzvahs, <laughs> and every now and then I would just like roll the 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 vinyl back, right, and that's that's all she's saying. Like at the end of Purple Rain, wop 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 thing down, flip it, reverse it, just. Backwards. So, have you ever done that on Purple Rain? Wah, 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 at the end of the album Purple Rain? Darling Nikki? No, no you know what I'm talking about. That's what saying, Darling Nikki? No, no, so at the end of Darling Nikki, right, it goes wah, 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 and then ooh, ooh, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Well, yeah. next time you go to the record, Darling Nikki, he's just singing about God is coming soon, is what he's saying. So when you play it backwards, when you what? play it backwards, yeah. This is why I love this man, yeah. because every now and then we'll just be talking about a record <laughs> And I'll learn some shit I did not know. Yeah, Luxury, <laughs> what made you do that? Like, you were home one day and be like, hmm, let me play this Prince song. <laughs> you have to remember, see what he's really you have to remember, this is during that 80s like time when like all these metal bands were being accused of like satanic worship messages. So right. like, I, my ears were already attuned to like, all right, that sounds backwards. What's going on here? And I think Prince is kind of having a laugh. He's like, hey, I'm not gonna do a devil thing. I'm gonna do a God thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what he did. So no that, producers that, that had, ever... You remember when they did that with Tupac back in the day on the Machiavelli album, on the bomb first song? They Bruh, said, I listened to Machiavelli out of every channel of my speakers <laughs> back in the day. Like I was like, oh, I, I know he's talking about Mob Deep right here. I'm gonna I'm gonna put all the all, <laughs> all the audio out of that like right front mm -hmm. speaker. But they, no, you they know. said he said they said he said Shook shot me. 
Oh yeah, yeah, I remember you that. Remember I remember that. Remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever tried that one? I haven't tried that one. Tupac. It's on. Uh, the song is Bomb First, I believe, on the intro. Yeah, yeah Bomb First young. got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. I was gonna ask: Do producers ever get mad because since you have the tracks, right? Yeah. People out there listening. What he's talking about is he breaks down things where you can get your hi hats, your snares, and your kicks. And some yeah. of these producers, that's their kick that they formulated and made. And you're talking about artists like, you know, Missy, yeah. who's I'm sure Timberland produced that kick, and he doesn't want that kick out there. I got more it. money, more problems. Diddy, I'm sure whoever produced yeah. that back in the day don't want that <laughs> kick and snare out. It's we don't. Funny. We don't want beef with Diddy for the record. Can, can, I, can I say that? We want beef with Diddy. I'd yeah. say my quick answer to that would be, that's a great question. And actually one of the industry secrets I would say is that most kicks and snares have been reused so many times that like all of Timberland's kicks and snares like came from something else from a sample pack. Correct. Those sample packs weren't necessarily cleared anyway. So it's kind of understood. Like I'm not gonna snitch on you. You're not gonna snitch on me because we're all kind of doing the same thing. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what's the song that y'all broke down and it ended up, you ended up talking about it, but then something completely different came about than you thought? Oh, that's a good question. Like on a recent episode, maybe. Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, there was there was Blue Monday. Yeah. By oh, New Order, moment, which is yeah, like yeah. you know, a lot of people don't know that song, but like it was like a seminal '80s track. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like I had no idea like when we were st when we started talking about that song, we were going to end up talking about you know not just like the British second wave of music, yeah. but also like. You know Sergio Leone's like spaghetti westerns. Yeah, this is like a 1980s British band from Manchester, and they were like nerds, like to their core, and they loved dance music and hip hop. And in Manchester, 1983, they're sampling Kraftwerk, they're sampling uh, Sergio Leone, like like Diallo said, and like it's unexpected in the context of this like bouncy white boy disco track, frankly. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking about, Diallo? Why do you look so perfect? No, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think. You know, because hip hop is interesting. Because sometimes we don't always have the stems on hip hop, but we'll play the song that hip hop sampled, and that leads to a totally different, totally unexpected conversation. Oh, I saw that the other day, man. Somebody was breaking down uh, "Shook One" by Mob. Yeah. Dude. He had like four different samples in that song. That Quincy yeah, Jones yeah, yeah. sample was crazy, right? I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. But <laughs> I know. It, was four different so it was like four different songs yeah. that broke oh, right. down and slowed down. I'm like, yeah, yeah. oh man. I mean, every single layer of that song was mm -hmm. a sample. Well, from you were something. just asking about Missy Elliott about working mm -hmm. in that song. There's some really crazy layering because, like, you know, it's got that um, ding, 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 ding. It's got that sound that comes from Blondie's Heart of Glass, if you can mm -hmm. picture it in your head. It's easier to like listen and, and hear it. But like, mm -hmm. That's actually a sample of Heart of Glass. So like Blondie gets a songwriting credit, Debbie Harry and Chris Stein, but it's actually from a drum machine, mm -hmm. which anyone can buy and use. It doesn't cost anything. So there's like layers of samples of samples. Mm -hmm. And then there's a Peter Piper Run DMC sample. In that which track, is actually a Bob end, James sample which is a called which, Take Me to the Mardi Gras. Which is Take Me to the Mardi Gras, which is a sample, which is a cover of a Paul Simon song. So Paul Simon is also songwriting credit <laughs> on Missy Elliott's Work It. Because of these crazy layers of like the origin, so it's the cover, wow. the sample, the I, I, sample I'm one of those the people. Sample. I'm one of those people. I I love to hear a sample that I didn't even think was a sample. Like when I found out just recently that a Millie, I thought somebody was just saying a Millie, and they just looped it, but that's like a reggae sample. You know what I'm saying? Like these wow. are things that like come out like, and I'm just like, oh man, I never even thought that was a sample. So really, our show is for like music nerds, but also right. just people who appreciate music. Totally, and just you know? making the connections. You know what I mean? Like. Like we were just talking because I was wearing this shirt. This is Lee Scratch Perry does mm -hmm. the song Disco Devil. But it's actually like him covering his own song, which is Chase the Devil, yeah. which then gets sampled by, Max by, Romeo. by Kanye samples it for Jay-Z's song Lucifer on Black yeah. Album. Yep. So like all these things are connected and it goes back to Jamaica. It's like, damn, they just kept it with Satan, huh? They didn't even try to turn it in. And no, they just left it be. <laughs> See, I never, get, it be. I never get nervous at all. And the reason I say nervous is, yeah. right, because, you know, back in, in the day, yeah, yeah. I'm a thousand percent a lot of producers didn't claim samples, right? Of course. Because uh -huh. you would have to catch it. Yeah. But you guys are catching DJ it. DJ Premier famously said, you know, y'all with the bullshit. You know, like, he, he said he yeah, yeah, no, 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 not to us. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it was on uh, one of those uh, Gangstar, one of the later Gangstar albums. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was the one with royalty and uh, uh, work, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, my steez. Mm -hmm. He had a whole skit, so to speak, back in the days of interludes where he was like, Yo, don't don't talk on this. Don't right. snitch on this. Don't but snitch, right. I feel like in today's environment, uh, I feel like they've probably worked that out. 
You know, I, I feel. <laughs> I hope they have. Well, so, so our, our, our goal is not to yeah. be the the sample snitches. Our right. our, our goal is That's to like really get people too. to appreciate yeah. the artistry. You have to understand, it's a producer from like, Dilla to Daft yeah. Punk. Like these yeah. people have taken the smallest bits of songs and like really like just flipped them in 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 really cool ways. So, question: Ed yeah. Sheeran when he got sued by okay, the Marvin Gaye estate? Yeah. Since you guys break down <laughs> everything, right, and you got the ears, right, what were your thoughts? on Well, it? this is funny because this yes. is our biggest dispute on text. Yes. This is the he- most heated we've ever gotten on text. Was dis- yeah. as this as this case was going down, I'm a musician, I'm a producer, so I'm kind of on both sides of it. Just to answer, by the way, the previous thing, like I, we're very anti sample snitch, so we never tell stories for the first time. We're not breaking any news. Correct. Everything that we talk about has been credited. Has been these are the stories behind the scenes, but like we're not going to get anyone in trouble for it. But um. The Ed Sheeran thing, as a songwriter myself, what that case came down to was chords, chord changes. And most cases that are about like copyright, you know, in music are about melodies. Like you stole a melody. This was just chords. And I've done that 10 million times. The earliest like musical stuff, my buddies used to go out, we'd like play guitars and busk and we play da da da, shake it up, baby. Now shake it up, baby. Ba la la la, bum ba ba la bum. It's the same chords. Mm-hmm. You're just putting different lyrics on top. That's what that case was about. So to me, I was like, I don't like the guy so much necessarily, but I don't think he should be, I don't think he should go to jail as it were for it. You don't like Ed Sheeran? Sorry about that. What kind of humor are you? You mean like don't like his music? <laughs> just... He seems like a fine gentleman. No, no, oh, okay. yeah, let's let's be music. clear what we great actually person. got into a dispute I'm about. Sure he's a great guy. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my issue with Ed Sheeran is that if you're going to like say anything, yeah, his song, Thinking About You. That's the one, yeah. The first time I heard it, I was playing at a wedding because, you know, I used to make my living as a DJ. Mm-hmm. The bass line of that it sounded a lot like Let's Get It On. Very let's and get if it you on. hear it, if you go back and listen to Thinking About You, Thinking Of You, whatever that song yeah, is, yeah. Um, it sounded a lot like Let's Get It On. And I was just like, this motherfucker, I, I, I probably shouldn't be cursing this. Before. It's all right. But you know what I'm saying? You know like that, that was my issue with that song was that I was like, this is the song that the Marvin Gaye estate should be going after, not Blurred Lines. They should be going after Ed Sheeran. And this that is was snitching. my issue. Huh? This is snitching. <laughs> this is, well, the case is over. The, the case, case is over. No, no. no. The case, the case Ed Sheeran over. won. He's, yeah, yeah. he's rich yeah. and he won the case. Yeah. So there's no snitching going on here. Think it out loud. Think it out loud is a great record. It is. Just, just listen to it. But to be mm. fair to you, and, and going back to Pharrell, <laughs> you were just you were upset, and I think rightfully so, because the Pharrell case was decided in the other direction. Yes, I, and, and I, I was like, I was like, I think that was this is feasible. another case yeah. of like a black man getting one decision, yeah. and the white guy getting a different decision. Well, Robin I totally Thicke, get it was that. Robin Thicke's song Diallo. Bro, I, I, I'm not here to defend. I am neither <laughs> here to defend nor bury Robin Thicke. <laughs> that is not why I'm here. Jesus. I'm not going to go there. Why'd y'all decide to do it with uh, XM <laughs> instead of doing like a podcast or something? Well, we do both. Oh, it's both. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So it comes out on Sirius XM on Wednesdays. Okay. Uh, at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 That's p.m. It. Eastern. But on Thursdays, it's available everywhere you get your podcast. Okay. Now, they're actually going to break down a song today, right? So we brought in a little little sample, a little, little sample Well, we noticed story. y'all are yeah. apparently fans of uh, Nirvana. Smells like Teen Spirit. Can right. y'all break down TV theme songs? Or that's how you can't do that. <laughs> we can do whatever we want. Yeah, whatever you want. Yeah. But I'm not ready for that. But they have, they have a canon because they got to get the kicks, the snares. They got to know where they got to do homework. Yeah. Wait, what, 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 what TV theme are you talking about? I don't know if we can talk TV. That's my point. No, we can talk TV. Oh, well, we can? I mean, like, it's not my TV show. What, what TV show are you oh, talking about? Oh, I didn't know that you could talk about others. I thought you couldn't talk about nothing in Hollywood. I think I he's know. trying to get you caught up. <laughs> He's tried with the snitching. I'm a member of it. SAG and the WGA. I'm not here to talk about TV. Okay. Let's talk about Smells Like Teen Spirit. Let's talk about Smells Like Teen Spirit. <laughs> By the way, I've been meaning to ask, like, why is that the theme song? It's such it's a fucking great song. I love it. I'm just curious um, where the story behind that is. I, I've always been a Nirvana fan, but I and I like the energy. Like when we first started the show 13 the years ago, yep. we were just looking for something that had like energy. Yeah. You know? And right, I feel right. like in the morning that then and that yeah. then you know the build up to oh, it. Yeah. And then when the, when the bass drops it just, it just hits. Let's do a quick breakdown. Just quickly though, I'm curious if you've seen there was a viral video, yeah. which by the way is the most sent thing ever that strangers send me saying, <laughs> Can you do a breakdown about this? Because mm-hmm. I've done two hundred breakdowns, so I get people all the time, do this, do this. So there's one where Pharrell's interviewing Dave Grohl from Nirvana. Have you seen that? Have you seen this clip where he's like no. Oh you have it. Okay, so talk about it. Okay, so the clip do, do you, you want to talk about the clip? No, you talk about the clip. Okay, I'll so in. In the clip, at the top of the song, do you want to play, uh, just play the Dave Grohl drum intro. So that's Dave Grohl. By the way, this is isolated Dave Grohl. Okay. 
This is your song. This smells like Teen Spirit. That's the drums now underneath pause it. it. So the top of that play is just the beginning again. The blah, oh, blah, oh, blah, oh, blah. So there's an interview where Pharrell's talking to Dave about this, and Dave's like, yeah, you know where I got that from? Mm-hmm. That's the Gap Band. Yeah. So let's play, he's talking about Dave his Grohl inspiration. Dave was literally like, yeah. I loved the <laughs> Greenwood Archer and Pine Band. Which I didn't know that's which, what Gap Who knew the Gap for? was an acronym? Yeah, which, I, I, I had no idea what that was on. <laughs> Dude, said, Those are the streets yeah. that they came up on. But yeah. this, the second he said that in the interview, I was like, I know exactly what he's talking about because I'm first and foremost, I'm mainly a drummer. Mm-hmm. And when I started playing drums and I would hear these Gap Band songs, I thought it was really funny that one of their favorite fills is, and if you want to play Gap Band, Either one of those two Gap Band tracks. So they do it in that one. Wow. And then, then do the other one. Do the other Gap Band. And that's that a bad man pajama too, right? <laughs> wow. Here you go. So, Gap wow. Band throws in that film all the damn time. Yes. And Dave Grohl's wow. like, I like that. So that's where that one comes from. But that's when it's fair game, right? Isn't it fair game Absolutely. when it's like the same chord, same drum? Okay, because so, that, that's what Ed was saying. That's right, and yeah. that's an absolutely perfectly connection to that to that case. That's why it's not illegal, because mm-hmm. it's just considered a thing you do on the drums. Mm-hmm. It's just a fill. I got one more for you. Is it okay if it if it if there's a swear at the end of this sure, one? Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> play, swear. Play the F one. Uh, You've been cursing a lot. <laughs> you recognize this, by the way? This gets sampled in a. Public Enemy song. Here's the fill. Oh, uh, then, 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 Spike Powell. Shit! It's Funkadelic. Get off your ass and jam. So that's just, that fill, blah, um, blah, um. It just, it's just like me, myself, and I when it first started. Me, myself, and I. Yeah, you're right. That's another one. Good call. If you're a funk drummer, it's just something you do in the 70s. Exactly. Yeah. So it's only, because I think they always say it's only like four or five different chords, four or five different drum patterns. Am I making that up? Oh, you mean like legally speaking or yeah, like that yeah. you can actually play? Legally. No, legally, that's actually turns out not to be true. People think you can sample two seconds or three notes or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. That's not true. The problem is that there really aren't clear guidelines and it depends on how suey the person feels. <laughs> so you're really taking a risk if you do anything that's too close for comfort. But um, yeah, I mean, part of the, when it's non-melodic, I should say, like, a, but no one's going to sue you for a drum beat. Yeah. I say that and now... I'm gonna be shown a, a counter example because I'm sure somewhere in the world there's some lawyer that sued someone for a There's a lot of suey people out there. A lot of suey people out there. Do <laughs> yeah. so you wanna just to finish up the Nirvana? Sure. We can play for you the uh, Isolated Guitars. Is Kurt Cobain's Isolated Guitars from the uh, chorus. And there's like, 10 layers of guitar in there. It's this huge wall mm-hmm. of crunch. I never get tired of listening to these and, and sharing them with people. Just wow. like hair on the back of my neck. Uh, and then let's end up with, uh, let's wind up with uh, the acapella. This is Kurt Cobain isolated yeah. vocals. Let the lights out. It's a dangerous. Here we are now. Entertainers! Like hurts my throat. Stupid <laughs> and contagious! Here we are now! Entertainers! Keep it going for a minute. I'm a lotto! I'm a vino! I'm a skato! Malapino! I like it when it goes, yeah. Yeah! Right here. Hey! <laughs> Just that little hey always makes me laugh. You know, hey. one, of, one of the things I love about our show, hey. seriously, is that you can hear that. You can hear Amy Winehouse, untreated vocals. You can hear the Notorious B.I.G. When I heard Biggie's untreated vocals on Mo Money, Mo Problems, I was like, oh, this is the first time I actually realized like he's a person. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, There's something about hearing the untreated vocals. I'm like, yeah, he was 24 years old Mm -hmm. when he recorded this stuff. It takes them out of the movie. It makes them just like a person in the room. It's just a person. And then you're like, oh, he does sound like a 20. Because you know, when I hear Biggie on the track, I'm like, this man is still older than me. Yeah. You know, right. I'm way older than Biggie now, but like he's older. When you hear the isolated vocal, he's a kid, right? You were like, yeah, oh, this yeah. is a kid. How and old is he at I the time? Like he's 20, 24. 24. I think, oh, I think Biggie and Pac are rare cases just because they seem so mythical to us. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I never, I, of course, I'm, I never met Big. I know radio personalities that have, you know, our so, <laughs> so I snuck into a club before I was 21. I stuck into the Sky Bar mm-hmm. uh, in Los Angeles. 
And Audrey. I'll never forget, like, it was a cool night, and I was like, oh, man, I'm, I'm hanging out with adults. And then at some point, like, the whole attitude of the room changed. Eddie Griffin, Suge Knight, and Tupac oh, came into the club. This was, like, the summer of 96. Got serious. And I was like, oh, this is what it feels like when somebody sucks all the energy out of the room. Because at that point, it was literally all eyes on pot. Like, everybody just stopped what they were doing and just looked at him and Eddie Griffin. And I feel like... Our show is also an opportunity to tell these stories about, like, you know, the first time I saw Old Dirty Bastard in concert. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's an opportunity to share, like, music stories, not just between us, but right. between our guests. I, I'm going to ask, too, before you guys get up out of here. You look at somebody like Pharrell, right? And they created almost a sound. I should say the Neptunes. Yeah. So how does a... First a, time I heard that, I was like, when Jay-Z was like... Get you bling like the like, Neptune sound. I was like, is that a car? Like, <laughs> that, what, what is that sound? sound like two dogs flirting. <laughs> but, 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 that, but that's the sound, and he puts it in all of his music. Is that copyrighted? You know I me mean? Because, you know, anybody can do it, but we know it as Pharrell's yeah. sound. Right. But is that something that can be used? I mean, I, I think if you put it in your song, you're going to get a letter. You're going to see some Yeah, you're going to see a letter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you literally take that recording, then technically <laughs> that would be a sample. Over, like, right. <laughs> but do you mean like stylistically? Like if you do the style? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, it's not, three, it's not three, really... It's three or four notes, you know? Yeah. You're you going to yeah. get a letter. You know? You're going to get a letter. You're you're you can't do that. But it's interesting to ask that in the age of AI because that's what they're starting to talk about with like if you... The characteristics of somebody's voice, like there is a connection to those sort of Absolutely. scenarios where, again, it just takes the right circumstances where somebody makes a lot of money from it and the other one wants to sue it, then we'll find out the answer to a question like that. But but in theory, no, you you, you can't. You should have sued. us back just to talk about AI. Yeah. Because it uh, it not only affects the podcast, it affects what I do day to day. Mm. Um, Which is the stuff you can't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Which is? I, I'm a writer, you know, <laughs> I'm an actor. I mean like AI, yeah. that's a whole yeah. nother conversation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you brothers for joining us and breaking down some of the, the, the dopest music. In, in the Thank you so much. <laughs> I, never got I was like, there's a shower in here. I was like, yeah, I was like, wow, we've never heard a before. Thank you. Diallo Riddle Luxury, I appreciate y'all. Thank, Thank you so much for joining us. Get Diallo out of here before I start asking him questions about stuff he can't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> it's The Breakfast Club. Turn Go the on. mics off. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.